Hello everyone, Simon here. Let's continue playing Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy. Uh, we have Turnabout Beginnings, which is a uh, flashback, I think. A mini episode? The girl! Let her go! What on earth is going on here? Shut up! Come closer! And I kill her! Oh, is this about, uh... Sorry, but you're not going to get the chance! Pew pew! Oh snap! I'm reading through the file of an old court case. It was the first case of my longtime mentor, Mia Fey. Fugitive data. Picture one. Oh wait, data one picture. Name Terry Falls. Charge kidnapping murder. Sentence death penalty. What's what's his face? Why is his face like that? Fugitive movements after escaping force met with and then murdered Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne. Recaptured on Eagle Mountain about eight hours after his escape. Her very first client was a death row inmate who had recently broken out of prison. That was a whole year before Mia and, Mia and I ever met. Six years earlier, Mia Fey first trial. February 16, 9.24 a.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 4. Uh, I'm so nervous. I feel like I'm gonna die. <laughs> I shouldn't be that dramatic. I never should have accepted this case. <laughs> Why are you literally in a, in a like cartoon prison outfit? Eek. Ah, good morning. Don't be so jumpy, Mia. I didn't do nothing. I swear, I didn't kill nobody. <laughs> With that on your face? Terry Falls, my first client. Sentenced to death five years ago and now a prison escapee. Just relax, Mia. Make small talk and try to relax him. Um, so why did you escape anyway? <laughs> why did you escape? Ah, God. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't do nothing. I didn't kill nobody. I mean... I never lie. I didn't escape from nowhere. Why are you dressed like that then? Uh... But Mr. Falls, the police just recaptured you two days ago. Ugh, sorry. I told a little lie. <laughs> You're so bad. Oh boy. But anyway, I didn't do it. I never killed nobody. That's not going to be enough in court. Sorry for asking, but you're on death row, right? Uh... I, I'm really, really sorry. I, please don't stop doing this. They sentenced me to die five years ago, but I was tricked, I tell you. That woman, she lied in her testimony. That's why I got the death penalty. I swear it, I didn't kill her. I could never do that. I mean... Two days is ago, he escaped from the prison wagon when it crashed. So, he, I mean, he didn't... It's not his fault it crashed, right? And then about eight hours later... A policewoman was murdered before the police could recapture him. The police believed that Terry Force did it. Um, after you escaped, did you meet a policewoman? Yeah, I did. She's the reason I escaped. Hold on. Valerie's autopsy report stabbed with a knife in the back, died from blood loss between 4 and 5 pm. Key witness in the case against Falls five years ago. Hmm. Police officer and victim. So that much is true. He did meet with the victim. But I didn't kill her. She was alive when I left. She was alive, it's true. I mean... 
<laughs> Was she dying? Was she going to die when you left her? I can trust him, right? I mean, I should. Ha! Oh snap. Is that... is that Godot? You're not going to figure out the truth just by staring at the guy. You're... why are you here? I came to see how our little kitten is doing all alone in the big scary lion's den. I thought maybe you'd like someone to play with. What? Uh, where is Mr. Grossberg? Ha! That old man is probably still in bed. I bet he's clutching an empty bottle and mumbling in his sleep. Aren't I good enough? After all, it's me, Diego Armando! No, you're not good enough. What are you doing here? I didn't say... Yes, you did, Mia. He's not good enough. Say it. So, Diego Armando, the finest attorney at Grossberg Law Offices, is here for me. No, no, no. You've got it all wrong. Today, you're the finest. After all, it took me... It took an amazing amount of guts to take this case. Imagine an escape death row convict for our first client. Yeah, uh, thanks. I sure wish I could get out of the it though. Ha! Ah, relax! I just heard some good news. The prosecutor for today is fresh out of his diapers as well. <laughs> really? However, unlike a certain somebody who I won't mention, he's earned the reputation as a genius since the beginning since beginning his law career. Genius? Well, it's about time to head in, kitten. Sharpen those claws of yours. It's go time. I, th I believe that's sexual harassment. A solitary confinement cell for the condemned must be the world's loneliest place. And that's what my client ran away from. Every other lawyer gave up on him. But not me! <laughs> I mean, wh why not? When I saw those overflowing eyes and heard that simple childlike voice, I just had the feeling that he was telling the truth. You know, some people... Some people are very good at lying. <laughs> and... If somebody has murdered someone, like if they are a convicted murderer, chances are higher that they are very good at lying. <laughs> And by, by very good at like, lying, I mean some people are so good at lying, you can't believe yourself. <laughs> it's not like they're so good at lying, you can't believe them. No, they're good, so good at lying, you can't believe yourself. <laughs> because whatever it is that you feel, or you think you feel, that's wrong. Like, you're just wrong about them. Anyway, February 16, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number four. Court is now in session for the trial of Terry Falls. Mm, strange. Why does why is his hair like that? The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. That's not Edgeworth. Is that Edgeworth's dad? Does he have a big brother? I understand the lawyers for both sides are newcomers. Yes, Your Honor. I am Mia Fey. Miles Edgeworth, Your Honor. Wait, that is Miles? I thought Miles was already young. How did they make him even younger? <laughs> so you are the new prosecutor everyone is talking about, eh? They say you joined the prosecutor's office at quite an early age. At 20, Your Honor. I guess our little kitten hasn't earned herself much of a reputation yet, huh? Come on, Mia! You can't lose! Not to someone younger than you! <laughs> yeah. Mm. Young people running a trial. I'm not too sure how I feel about that. Well, you should feel old. That's how you should feel. So isn't Edgeworth, like, really good? Doesn't that mean Mia's gonna lose this case? Now then, the defendant in this case is currently a felon on death row. Two days ago, he escaped from a police wagon, is that correct? Precisely. But the defendant is not on trial for escaping prison. On the day that the defendant escaped, a policewoman was murdered. 
So we're here to determine if Mr. Falls was responsible for her death. You got it, kitten. That's sexual harassment? I'm gonna have you arrested for that. Well then, Mr. Edgeworth, let's hear your opening statement. Yes, Your Honor, it was five years ago. The defendant, Terry Falls, was sentenced to death in this very court. His crimes were kidnapping, extortion, and murder. Wait, does that justify a death sentence? I thought you have to, like, murder multiple people to get a death sentence. I, I, I don't know. The girl he threw off the bridge was only 14 years old. A truly horrible crime, I remember it well. There was no decisive evidence, so the trial was long and protracted. <laughs> there was no actual evidence? No, come on, you sentenced him to death without decisive evidence? That's not right. No, no way, no way. Like, if there's any, any doubt that he might not be guilty, you can't give him death sentence. Correct, but in the end, what finally decided the case was a certain witness's testimony. A witness's testimony. The testimony of Detective Valerie Hawthorne, the person who confronted this criminal. She arrested Mr. Falls at the scene and later testified against him. She said she witnessed Mr. Falls throw his young victim into the river. For those who are not aware, Eagle River is well known for its powerful current. Most bodies that fall in are never recovered. So Miss Hawthorne's testimony was the one that put him away. That policewoman you just mentioned, that wouldn't be... Exactly, the victim, the same woman that was killed two days ago. Police Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne. Aha, I see. The man who was sentenced to death based on her testimony escaped two days ago. With only one thing on his mind, to take revenge against the woman who convicted him. I mean, that's conjecture, Judge? You're just making things up now? Mm. Aha! The truth is becoming clear to me now. That's not how this works, Judge. That's not how this works. Huh. Yes, yes. It's quite obvious that the defendant is guilty. <laughs> this is... This is Atrocious. <laughs> this court is atrocious. Objection! Wait a minute, that's not right. <laughs> At least hear the case before you decide on the outcome, Your Honor. Hmm. Watch yourself, Miss Faye. I'm not sure I care for your word choice or your tone or, or voice. Are you sexist, Judge? <laughs> I think you're sexist. I think you need to be uh, removed from office. <laughs> Young people these days simply don't know how to respect their elders. J J what? <laughs> Why? You're even younger than me, you hypocrite. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What? Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, please call your first witness. I called the, de the detective who was in charge of the initial investigation of this case. Hey, his jacket is brown. <laughs> A ten, I mean. Witness! State your name and occupation! Gumshoe, thick gumshoe, I'm the homicide detective in charge of the case, sir. I finally got promoted to the detective division half a year ago. I don't believe anyone asked you about that. Hey, ma'am, you got any idea how much work it takes? <laughs> what is it? You... You're really gorgeous. <laughs> That's sexual harassment? <laughs> Excuse me? No, seriously. My heart. It's aching for you. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's sexual harassment. I want him arrested now. Detective, pull yourself together and try to be professional. Otherwise, I'll write you up on contempt so quick that something other than your heart will ache. <laughs> okay, I got it. Now, detective, tell us about the incident. Yes, sir. Right away. The victim was Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne, a veteran on the police force. She was stabbed in the back with a knife and died from excessive blood loss. Hmm. 
that much is already stated in the autopsy report. The court would like to hear more details about the incident itself. Yes sir, I got ya. Okay, let's take a look at this aerial map of the area here. This is a sketch of Dusky Bridge and Old Suspension Bridge. And the river that runs under there is Eagle River. The victim and the defendant met there on top of the bridge. After stabbing her in the back, the, car the killer carried the victim back to his car. He was recaptured at a police checkpoint as he was trying to make his getaway, sir. Mmm, I see. Dusky Bridge map added to the court record, located 40 feet above Eagle River. Was the victim's blood found on the bridge? The victim, Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne, was wearing a thick coat, sir. Unfortunately, no traces of blood were found on the bridge. <laughs> so how do you know? How do you know they won the bridge? Mm. Mr. Edgeworth, I warn you that I absolutely despise conjecture. <laughs> you just got to... <laughs> you just wanted to... to pronounce guilty at the start because of your conjecture. If there was no blood on the bridge, then you have no proof that they even met there. Your Honor. If you would listen to the testimony we have prepared, I'm sure you will be convinced. The two of them most certainly did meet on the bridge that day. Why, Mr. Edgeworth? I'm not sure I like you wagging your finger at me as though I'm some loser. <laughs> Wait, some hoser? You are a hoser, Judge. Detective, proceed with your testimony. Um, yes, sir. Here we go, Mia. Hang on! Okay, now listen carefully, kid, and stop that. Uh, that's sexual harassment. I want him arrested. <laughs> One little mistake and this guy would drink you for morning tea. Trust me and get ready. Trust you. Nobody trusts you. On the day of the incident, an unknown person phoned the sergeant and asked to meet. Sergeant Hawthorne went to Dusky Bridge at the designated time and met with Mr. Falls. And that's where she was brutally murdered, sir. The criminal stuffed her body into his car trunk and tried to make a getaway. Why would he do that? He could have just chucked her into the river. Why? Mr. Force was arrested at a police checkpoint we set up at the base of the mountain. That makes no sense. Mm. Well, you certainly have established the importance of the bridge. Naturally, but there's no but there's no evidence that they were on the bridge. <laughs> this is, what a what a mess. Now with the defense, please hurry up and proceed with the cross examination. Yes, Your Honor. Cross examination coming right up. Hey hey, settle down there. Uh, don't call me that. If you keep trembling like that, you're gonna make me spill my coffee. Oh, go spill your coffee then. Hot room can be a cold battlefield, all right, especially for an asshole. I, I I absolutely despise this interaction. I mean, the defendant, the witness, everyone's a beginner in here. Ha! You got me there. But maybe you should keep your claws out and show them what you've got. It's okay, Mia. Stay calm. Just remember those court procedure videos you stayed up all night watching. <laughs> Summary of the incident. On the day of the incident, an unknown person phoned the sergeant and asked to meet. This unknown person. You have no idea who it might be, right? Sorry, but I'm afraid I do. What? The one who called Sergeant Hawthorne was the defendant, Terry Falls. Nani, the defendant. The defendant called her. <laughs> Why are you so surprised? Sergeant Hawthorne was a very thorough person, sir. She left a note about her phone call with Mr. Falls. A note? If you knew who it was, why did you say an unknown person called her? It's not unknown, because you know. You know it's, it's, it's the defendant. <laughs> Yeah, a top secret memo that she left in her desk. 
victim's note added to the court record. Confidential police materials written by the victim. Mm. According to this note, it seems the one who called her onto the bridge was indeed the defendant, Terry Falls. Whose bright idea was it to keep that note from me? Assuming this is true, Falls 4... 30 p.m. at that bridge, wear white scarf for identification, talk to Dahlia, tell her this time the whole truth must come out. Mm. Talk to Dahlia. Can I talk to Dahlia? Ah, looks like the judge is even more sure of his verdict now. Listen up, never ask a question if you don't already know the answer. That's not... That's not good. That's not good advice. That's not good advice. Amanda, that's not good advice. That's the detective's fault. He's the one that said, unknown person. Hey now, don't make that face at me. I just said it was... I just said it that way because the prosecutor told me to. <laughs> was that a trap? With that cute face, I didn't expect him to be so sneaky. What an asshole. Sergeant Hawthorne went to Dusky Bridge at the designated time and met with Mr. Falls. A bridge up in the mountains, but why meet there? Because it is a very important place to the defendant, that's why. What do you mean by that? If you remember, five years ago, the defendant kidnapped a young girl. He was chased onto a bridge, and it was there that he killed his hostage. And the place where all of this occurred is, of course, Dusky Bridge! The very place where Sergeant Hawthorne arrested and handcuffed Mr. Falls. Ah, returning to the scene of the crime, how nostalgic. And that's where she was brutally murdered, sir. Was the body of the victim discovered right away? Yeah, we were really on the ball. We found the criminal within one hour of the murder. It was great! We even got to say, don't move, we've got you surrounded. <laughs> Wait a second. Isn't there something weird about that? 4th fight. Wait, is there something weird about that? The location was a suspension bridge up in the mountains. So how did they find out about the crime so quickly? Sergeant Hawthorne must have mentioned the phone call to someone else, right? Ha! Ah, if that's what happened then she wouldn't have been killed. She never mentioned the phone call from Mr. Falls, but she left a note on her desk about it. If only I had noticed it earlier, maybe she'd still be alive. I wonder why she didn't mention the phone call to anyone. What's the note, dude? The note on her... what, this one? The criminal stuffed her body into his car trunk and tried to make, it, make a getaway. Mr. Falls had a car then. Well, that bridge is way up in the mountains, ma'am. The defendant and the victim both went up there by car. I mean, how else, right? What? You mean the defendant drove his own car? No, no, of course not. It was stolen. He stole it from a young couple that had been waiting at a red light. Mmm, car thieves. I'm not sure how I feel about car thieves. <laughs> You're not sure how you feel about them? <laughs> is this guy sure about how he feels about anything? This is a photo of the stolen car's trunk. Ah, she is stuffed. Naturally, that is the body of Valerie Hawthorne in there. Hmm. No blood. Whoa! That! That doesn't look too comfortable. <laughs> Crime photo added to the court record. The victim. She was stabbed in the back, correct? Yeah. Ha! Ah. For some reason, men always seem to get stabbed in the back. Because you're assholes, that's why. We're talking about a woman here. <laughs> you can't tell from this photo, but the knife was stuck in her back nice and firm. The condition of the body when it was discovered is very important information. Detective, was there anything strange or noteworthy in the trunk of the car? Here's a photo of the trunk, but I don't see anything strange to you. Any... anyone. What did the defendant have to say about this photo? What he always says, ma'am. I didn't do it. I didn't do nothing. 
That's all he says. Nothing. I wouldn't say he did nothing. At the very least, we know he stole her car. It's just what he always says, Your Honor. And then he always says, Uh, sorry, I told a little lie. Or something like that. Well, in any case, it seems he was caught and arrested. Precisely! Mr. False was arrested at a police checkpoint we set up at the base of the mountain. That certainly is some impressive police work. Well, no, actually, it was way too close for comfort. We set up the checkpoint just after 5pm. We figured that Mr. Force might just try to run. What do you mean it was too close for comfort? The two of them arranged to meet at 4.30pm. And it takes approximately 30 minutes to go from the bridge to the checkpoint. Mm, it was kind of close. Any later and Mr. Falls could have slipped right by. This is enough, there's a big trap waiting for you in that testimony. A trap! Walk into it carelessly and we'll leave more than just a flesh wound. Fun, huh? No, it's not! Well, if you want to have any chance at all, you'd better get some more information. And if you're gonna get caught in the trap, it's best to get caught early. You can always look for contradictions afterwards. The ever-famous contradictions. I sure hope I can find some of those. I don't even know what I'm doing. What do I have? Bridge? Car? Where was he caught? Died from blood loss between 4 and 5. I mean, the fact that he had to carry her back and stuff her in the trunk. They met 4.30. Wear white scarf for identification. Where's the white scarf? There's no white scarf there. 